Marcos Hitler Dictador Tuta. We chanted at a small indignation rally at Freedom Park in downtown Davao City in November 2016. I don't think I was the only one who never thought I would hear that 70s slogan again. It was a real throwback. I would have laughed at the irony of it, but it wasn't funny. This was the day the Supreme Court ruled that there was no legal impediment to burying Marcos in the Libingan ng mga bayani, a name that literally translates into Cemetery for Heroes. There were barely 10 of us from our ragtag group of former leftist activists, martial law survivors, and human rights activists we called Consensia Dabao the conscience of Davao, speaking up initially against giving the dictator a hero's burial promised by President Rodrigo Duterte to his allies. The Marcoses were indeed back in power through Duterte after being ousted by a people's revolution barely 30 years before. Duterte had never been shy about his admiration for how Ferdinand Marcos led the Philippines with an iron hand. And Duterte's campaign image of a closed fist suggests an affinity with that leadership style. It was enough reason for me to go back to the streets. Unfortunately, in Duterte's bailiwick, this protest mattered only to us protesters. It was not Davos conscience speaking. It was our individual principles. And did I mention how many were there? As a writer, I, it is my job to remember, not the way historians must, but because of what we see through our remembrance, to keep an eye on the big picture from which we draw hope. We cannot just let things go for the sake of moving on. Nobody moves on without a sense that justice had been dealt. Part of me is convinced that if I moved on from what ails me, I would stop being a writer. I, I wouldn't have anything to write about. The status quo is not a source of story or poetry. To write a memoir means to remember, to fix memories onto the page, to make history. Some reports say, that there have been an average of 28 killings per day since Duterte became president. Given a six-year term limit, that could be about 60,000 deaths of poor people. A drop in the bucket, some would say. And if they're drug addicts, don't they deserve it? I am not a devout Catholic, but I've been praying the rosary more fervently these days seeking the intercession of St. Jude the Deus, patron saint of hopeless cases. I also ritually light votive candles in the parish of St. Jude on Malvar Street in Davao City, where I have lived since 2007. But he has not answered any of my prayers. I keep going there anyway, believing that one day he will finally see that what I'm praying for is truly hopeless and finally send help. Saint Jude Deus, pray for us. Anybody hear the prayer of my people?